Take a handful of power. Add some technology. A certain amount of ingenuity. Some basic hard work. Turn up the heat, and what do you get? The modern kitchen. But where did they all come from? Our cookers and cutlery and crockery, they didn't just happen by magic. Well, that's what this series is all about. Dishing up the goods on the mechanics of domestic life. In this program, I'm going back to the chopping board to find out how our sleek, fully integrated appliance-filled kitchens have emerged from the caves of the Stone Age. A Neanderthal chef had a truly basic kitchen. Their cooking arrangements were little more than this, really. At least when they'd finished. There's no washing up. But some things haven't changed quite as much as you'd think over the centuries. Since the dawn of agriculture, we've been grinding cereals to make that most basic but tasty food, bread. Before shops and high streets, we would bake our own bread. So a bread oven was a central feature of large houses from the 12th century onwards. So this is the oven. So it looks almost biblical to me. The form and shape, it looks timeless. What period would this be from? That's right. Well, these have been used from the earliest times. Uh, you can see them in Egyptian pictures. You can see them right through. Uh, in this country, you see Iron Age examples of them. Uh, very, very simple format. It's a pizza oven, really, isn't it? And, it? and it really just goes to show how timeless this bread making lot really is. Here I am. Let's go. Let's do it. There he is. They reckon people would have eaten three loaves a day each, so an oven like this would have been going non-stop. And if you wanted a white loaf, that required a lot of extra work. There you go. And what is this? What's the process? Right, you're you're separating out the brown um, and the bran from the white, and it's coming through. Beautiful, <laughs> high-quality white flour. But you can see why it was so uh, treasured, because it takes so long. So. Who had the white loaves then? Generally for the upper classes in the family. So peasants like me got the brown bread? Yeah, I fear so. It's funny how things get reversed, isn't it? Now, brown bread is the bread to eat. The bread takes just 20 minutes to bake. These ovens are extremely efficient. Well done. Right, let's get them over to the table. Great stuff. Well, it looks good so far, but... Ah, ah, a bit too hot to... Let's slice this one. However, there is a design flaw in baking bread in the ashes of the fire. Now, I'm a sliced bread kind of guy. Right. But I'm not going to eat that, am I? Well, unless you're uh, of the lower classes and you're desperately hungry. So they devised a style of slicing bread that wasted nothing and catered for rich and poor alike. So first of all, you want to go down the centre to divide into your upper mm -hmm. and lower mm -hmm. crust. Everything has to be easily handleable, okay? And then that will sit again on top, and that will be taken to the table. Oh, and we waltz off with that then? Absolutely, we'll... that, will sit, that will be beside your place when you sit down at table. But who gets the bottom bit? Right, okay, well the bottom bit you can discard, that will go off to the peasants. Ah, so that's where I like order Yeah, that, that's me. That's you want me. the fine stuff off the top with a nice soft crust, nice inside, burnt stuff off to the lower orders. So that's where the phrase upper crust comes from. That's right, absolutely. Upper crust. As baking improved, this type of bread was swept away by the convenience of sliced bread and toasters. We've tried many different ways to make toast successfully. Swiveling, flipping, ejecting and tilting. Some toasters had timer controls and ejected the toast, but they all needed care and attention. It wasn't until the 1950s that the automatic toaster with browner control became widely available, and we were finally able to make perfect toast.
these days we still need to mill flour to bake bread but we've eliminated all the toil of a medieval baking day by putting all our baking into one little box the fully automated bread making machine you just pour all the ingredients in and leave it for a few hours it's no quicker but it's a lot easier I really wish I'd invented this and I really wish you could smell this this is great oh Ooh, let's, well, how do we get it out? There's a little handle. I pull this up and uh, we should have a fully intact super duper loaf. Oh, there it is. Let's see if we can pop that out. Ah, hmm, ah, hmm. But we still do heat in the 21st century. It's still hot. Ha, ah, ha, ha. How do we get it out? There must be a way. <laughs> oh, look at that. Now that's one fantastic loaf. This is all so simple and easy, why not share it? Oh, that's enough of that. On with the story. Even by Tudor times, kitchens were rudimentary affairs. What they could cook was limited by technology and availability. I'm going to make a pottage with this. That would be, that'd be fantastic if I knew what pottage was. What is it? <laughs> well, this is a savoury pottage. It basically just means it's cooked in a large pot. Um, there's nothing fancy about it. <laughs> it's that exotic. It's it? that exotic. It's not pottage. Yes. No, well, it could be, but uh, in Sussex it's pottage. So how would those medieval people actually cook this big pot of goodness? Anthony? Straight into a pot, over the fire. Oh, great. What a great bit of kit. Now, it all looks very painful to me. What, what does it actually do? Well, you've seen its main function. It swings out to bring the pots away from the fire. But it also goes up and down to so raise and lower your pot to speed up the pottage. And so you can sort of increase or decrease you the You can heat. increase the heat underneath it, yeah. You've not got an on and off button as you would have with today's cookers. This is the only way to do it. But what about this swinging in and out. Why do you need to bring the thing in and out of the fire? Well, the pot gets very hot, so it's difficult to pick up by hand. They were also cooking in long clothes. They didn't want to get too close to the fire. They could set fire to themselves. So it's much safer to bring the pots away from the fire. That's simple and effective, isn't it? These homes were damp and drafty, so salt had to be kept in a box above the fire to keep dry. The leather hinge didn't rust, and the shape of the box was so distinctive that in the north of England, back-to-back -back terraced houses became known as salt pots. <laughs> You've done this before. Only, only, this is camping, really, inside, isn't it? Very appetising. I'll tell you what's missing. Potatoes. Potato. No potatoes at this point. No, they came later. Well, when they got them out of the garden? No, you mean really Oh, uh, When they brought them over from America. So this really is the the basic meal for everybody. This is uh, one of the most basic meals you can get. Come on, Anthony. Where's me pottage? Your pottage is served. Ah, I do like a nice pot of pottage. And I've got me eating irons. Well, this doesn't look like it's going to be much use, so I'll start with a spoon. Great. God knows what I thought this would be like. But it's fantastic. But, no fork, just a spoon and a knife. 